Hello and welcome. Today we have a truly jam-packed video. We are taking a look at a lot of things. We've got the new powder and new precious lipstick from Clay de Pau. We have the Sonia G Tradition series. We have the new Bobbi Brown blushes and bronzer, and we have an RMK eyeshadow palette. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start off with Bobbi Brown. We're going to do the bronzer and the blushes together. This is the new bronzer. This is the shade light. So let's go ahead. We're going to do arm swatches. Then we'll move on to the cheek swatches and demos. Now I do have a little bit of staining on my arm. I apologize. It has not gone away. So this is the shade light and you can see that it does run a little warm. We have a little bit of a golden, slightly orange hue to it, but definitely not too warm still. Then I picked up three of the new blushes. So this is the one that I have on right now. This is actually the one that I've been wearing the most. This is called Desert Pink, and we have two finishes in the new blushes. There are matte blushes and uh, shimmer finish and this is going to be one of the matte blushes so you can see that this is going to be a soft dusty rose with just a touch of mauve in there so I think it's a really beautiful kind of like everyday cool but not too cool <laughs> tone of a blush and it's just a great everyday shade this one here is nectar and Nectar to me, I think of like something peachier, but you can see that this is actually going to be kind of a true medium rosy pink shade here. This one here is also going to be matte. So it's definitely warmer than the desert pink, but it is not, it's still a neutral pink shade. And then the last one I picked up is the shade modern, and this is in the shimmer finish. So if you take a look at my finger, you can see a little bit of the shimmer in there. Now the shimmer in these blushes is actually on the more subtle side. So you can see, even though there is some shimmer, it's definitely not an overly glittery blush. It's not going to be you know, in your face. It's still pretty sh subtle, but you've got some shimmer for some light reflection. Let's take a look at the demos and we'll talk a little bit about the details. So let's start off with the bronzer here and you can see I've got a couple of demos so you can kind of see how this uh, performs. Overall, I think it's a really nice bronzer formula. It goes on very easily. It's a buildable formula and it lasts all day. The bronzer retails for 47 US dollars. We have eight shades in the bronzer and the whole purpose of this bronzer is to help you achieve that soft focus look. It is made in the US. We have a one year shelf life and nine grams of product. So overall, I think it is a really nice product. It's free of parabens, phthalates, sulfates, silicones, petrolatum, and gluten. And this formula, as well as the new blushes, they both have an emollient coated for formula to help create a silky lightweight texture. And there is coconut oil in both of these products. It's there to help with the formula's soft touch. We have microspheres to help the formula blend seamlessly into the skin. So that's gonna be true for the new bronzer and the new blushes. Now, the new blushes are also free of parabens, phthalates, sulfates, silicones, petrolatum, and gluten, but they are also free of formaldehyde and paraffin. The blushes, there are 12 shades currently available at Nordstrom, but if you look at their overall product swatch pictures, there are 15 shades. So the other three I haven't seen anywhere yet. The blush shades are artist curated shades designed to mimic cheeks natural flush and enhance all complexions. It lifts your look with tone true color. And as I mentioned, we have two different finishes. The matte is for a soft natural makeup look and the shimmer features light catching pearl particles for a subtle sheen. Now our blushes are also made in the US. We have a one year shelf life and we have three and a half grams of product. I've been wearing the blushes on and off for a couple of weeks. And I have to say, I really like these. This formula works really well for me. It blends into the skin very seamlessly, lasts all day and it's buildable. Now, as I mentioned, they do have coconut oil. That is not an issue for my skin type, but I know that for some people, coconut oil can be an issue. So definitely keep that in mind before you purchase these. However, I have to say, I really think this is a nice blush. It is kind of a basic formula, 
that's done really well. It seems to melt into your skin. It lasts all day. And you can see from the demos and the cheek swatches that it definitely is a buildable formula. The colors themselves, I think they did a really nice job kind of creating colors that range the spectrum with different undertones, different overtones and so forth. So overall, I have to say I really like these. So the bronzer, I love the formula for the bronzer, but the color is just not my favorite. Let's just take a look at a couple of quick comparisons. So for the bronzer, I wanted to compare two bronzers. This is the Hermes in number one to Tori. Again, a really great bronzer formula, but it does run a little warm and you can see that it's gonna be lighter than the Bobbi Brown in light. So the difference here is the Bobbi Brown actually has a little bit more brown in there and a little bit of an olive shade to it, whereas the Hermes definitely has more yellow. And then this is the Gucci bronzer in number one, Fair. And this is my favorite for my skin tone. It has a little bit more red in there and you can see it's cooler in tone. So overall, I would have to say between these three different shades, the Gucci works best for me, followed by the Bobbi Brown and then the Hermes. So I would say that the Bobbi Brown is a little bit more neutral than many of the bronzers that we see on the market but it's definitely not gonna be as cool in tone as the Gucci. So just one more time, we have the bronzer in light. This is going to be the desert pink matte blush, followed by the nectar matte blush and the modern shimmer blush. And you can see again, that it is gonna be pretty subtle. Let's move on to the RMK palette. So RMK, if you're not familiar with them, they are a Japanese brand. This was one of the holiday palettes that I picked up. I purchased mine from Fude Japan. There are a few other retailers where you can purchase Japanese cosmetics, and I'll leave those down below in the description box. But you know, RMK is not sold directly in the US or too many countries. So just something to note, but I think it's a really beautiful palette and I really wanted to try these. So this is the first time I have tried their shadows and you can see we've got a lot of shimmers in this palette. Look at this light one here. This, it looks like a light, look at this light shade here. We've got a little bit of a dual chrome. It kind of reflects from like peach to gold to a light green. And then we have this next shade here is gonna be a little bit more olive, kind of like a little bit more of like olive cr uh, crossed with a pea green. And again, that's gonna be a shimmer. This lavender shade, I have to say, this lavender shade and the shade right below it, that was my purpose for buying this palette. <laughs> so I absolutely love those shades. The lavender is actually a bit more opaque than I expected it to be. And you can see that we have a true lavender with a little bit of, there's a little bit of pink in there. And then this last shade in the first row, this is going to be a satin. And this is fuchsia. And there's actually a little bit, if you build up the satin sheen, you get a little bit of a purple vibe to it. Now for the bottom row, we have this soft peachy shade here. And I have to say, I really like these two combined together, the first shades over here on the left. And then we have this nice coppery brown. Again, everything in this palette is gonna be shimmery except for this fuchsia. And then this shade here, it's like a gray green with a little bit of blue in there as well. So this, this shade here, I absolutely love this. And then last up, we have this kind of muted, muted rose with a little bit red in there. So this is the RMK holiday palette. Now let's take a look at a quick demo and some details. So as I mentioned, RMK is a Japanese brand and it is made in Japan. We have 15 grams of product here and this is called the Dancing Dimensions Eyeshadow Palette and it came out for holiday 2023. The formulas are lightweight on the skin. They perform very well. You've got beautiful shimmers, minimal fallout. 
Again, RMK is not something that's you know very easy to access here in the US, but I thought it was worth picking up for this. Packaging on here is gonna be click closure. We have a plastic case, but it's fairly heavy duty, plus a case and a full size mirror in there. There is no room for utensils in here. Overall, I have to say, I think it's a really beautiful palette. And once in a while, I like to pick up some of these Japanese items, these Asian exclusive makeup items that we can't get here in the US. I've got some more that I'll be featuring on my channel at some point. But this one here is one that I just couldn't resist and I really wanted to try this brand and see how it compares to Addiction Tokyo. So I will be having another Addiction Tokyo collection video coming up soon with all of the additional items that I have purchased. But I have to say, I think these are both really great brands. Formula wise for the shimmers, I feel like the shimmer formula in the Addiction Tokyo feels a little bit creamier, a little bit more moisture in the formula versus the RMK, but they're both very smooth and silky and performance is comparable between the two. Let's go ahead and move on to the new Clay de Po powder. So this is the new Clay de Po refining pressed powder. And this is new to the US, but it was released a couple of years ago in other countries. So just something to note, if you are not in the US, this could potentially be a product you already have. Now, just for size reference, this is the cushion, the Radiant Cushion Foundation. And you can see that the pressed powder here is going to be slimmer all the way around. So now the powder itself does come with a little thin flocked sponge. This is very, very smooth. It's actually a really nice uh, powder puff. I personally still prefer a brush, but it does come with that. And I think it's actually really, it, it feels a little different than some others. So very, very nice. But this here is the powder itself and this is refillable. We do have a hole in the back. You can punch this out and refill it. So, so let's move on to the demos while we talk about this. We'll come back and do just a couple of swatches on the back of my hand. Now for the demos, I wanted to show you how the powder performs itself. I also wanted to compare it to the Burberry powder because that is another pressed powder that is new that I have just recently featured on my channel. So, you know, which one's better? And then in addition, as we get through these demos, you'll see we also have some comparisons with the Sisley blur powder and the Chantecaille blur powder as well. So the one from Holiday. So you can kind of see how those are before, like you put on the foundation as well as after the foundation as a setting powder. So hopefully that will help you kind of figure out which one of the powders, you know, is something that you're most interested in, if any. So let's talk a little bit about the Clay de Po powder itself. The refining press powder, we have five grams of product and it retails for 115 US dollars. It is a setting powder with a fine translucent matte finish and it's supposed to give you basically instantly refreshed for a soft radiant just applied look that lasts all day with hydrating treatment benefits and it melts into the skin. It minimizes appearance of pores and smooths roughness while helping to absorb excess oil without creasing dullness or shine. It maintains optimal moisture and balance with hybrid skincare and makeup ingredients, flawlessly sets foundation and face makeup for a fresh, radiant, and refined look that lasts. Now, a couple of things that I wanted to highlight here, and this is from the Clay de Po website. They have a new technology that they developed that they're calling the Instant Retouch Formulation. And this recreates the look of just applied makeup for a fresh finish that lasts up to 12 hours. So essentially, if you, let's say you're at work and it's lunchtime and you want to kind of touch up, you can actually put on a little bit of this powder and it's supposed to give you that fresh face look like you just touched up. So, you know, I think that's really cool. Honestly, you know, I've tested it mildly, but, 
yeah, it, it seems to give you a really kind of fresh look. But again, if you have other products that are kind of interfering with that, maybe they haven't held up as well, that could you know alter that effect as well. Another feature that they have is what they call lasting control function. And it, this is supposed to react to perspiration to prevent shine, dryness, and excess sebum. It releases moisture to prevent dryness. Now I have to say here, it's been cold. Now we're in a warm spell. It, the weather has been kind of all over the place, but it has not been hot and sweaty out yet. So I can't test that part really, but in the weather changes and so forth, it has held up beautifully. And in the colder dehydrating weather, I have noticed that it really does help prevent that dry powdery look at the end of the at the end of the day it really does seem to melt into the skin and you can see in the demo between the clay de po and the burberry at the end of the day when i've got the wear test you can see that the clay de po still looks pretty fresh i think both powders look good at the end of the day but to my eye it looks like the clay de po looks slightly better now the burberry in comparison we actually get 11 grams of product and we have this core of the translucent refining powder that's your blurring powder is supposed to blur imperfections and then you have tinted setting powder around that and it comes in different shades so this one has 11 grams of product and it retails for 58 us dollars so not only are we more than twice the size but it's also half the price <laughs> so this is definitely you know kind of a, a different they're kind of in different categories now the burberry is a non-drying lightweight and breathable formula it provides a 24-hour mattifying veil with active protection and you're supposed to have 24-hour shine control and it has skin protecting ingredients and it is a vegan formula. Now, both of the products do have a two year shelf life. As I mentioned, the clay de po is five grams while the Burberry is 11 grams. And the clay de po is going to be made in Japan while the Burberry is made in Italy. Overall, I think both of the powders are really beautiful powders. And I think it really depends what you're looking for. I think the Burberry, when you first put on the powders, the Burberry initially looks a little bit better than the Clay de Pau. The Clay de Pau is a slightly more powdery formula than the Burberry. So it's a little bit easier to pick up the powder in the first place and to dispense a little bit more onto the skin. The Burberry is gonna be a little bit firmer in the pan. So you're really picking up less product and you don't necessarily have to be as cautious. So I think the initial application, the Burberry looks slightly better because you don't have that drier powdery look, but after five minutes, both of them kind of melt into the skin and they look pretty comparable. Now, overall between the two, let me know what you guys think. Which one do you think looks a little bit better or do you think they're kind of equal? My personal opinion is that at the end of a long day, I do think that the Clay de Po looks better than the Burberry, but Again, we are looking at a significant price difference. And yeah, you know, overall, I think they are both great powders. So I think it's really just gonna be which which one are you in the market for? What fits your budget? So overall, I think they're both great as setting powders. Now, when we're looking at the Sisley Blur Expert and the Chantecaille Blur Powder, and again, this is from Holiday. So this one does have a little bit of shimmer. This is the pink one. And I think that these are both great products, but I do think that they are very different from the Clay de Pau and the Burberry because both of these products are really, they're specifically blur powders. The Sisley, I don't really even think of it as a powder. I think of it as a powder primer. So I like to use the Sisley underneath my foundation and really buff that into the skin. I can use that on top of a primer, underneath a primer, or in place of a primer, and I get kind of a similar effect. But it really doesn't add any weight or dryness to the skin, and it buffs in, gives you a really beautiful blurred finish. You can put the foundation on top of that, and you're still getting that blurred effect. The Chantecaille, 
I actually prefer this one buffed in on top of the foundation, but I don't really think of it as a setting powder. I kind of think of it as a glow addition. Now this one is a glow powder, but they do have those that are uh, not with this glow or shimmer. And uh, those are in the permanent line. It does give you a blur. You can use that one underneath foundation as well, just like the Sisley. But I do find that the Sisley has an enhanced blur to the Chantakai in that particular manner. The Chantakai, uh, you know, I think that one looks best kind of buffed in on top of the skin, more like a setting powder, you know, in the placement of the steps. But I think of it more as a it's kind of like a finish to your foundation, not a finishing powder per se, because you are still doing it underneath your other products. But, you know, I think it's more used as a foundation enhancer. So I think both of those products are best buffed into the skin. The Sisley, again, is more of a primer product. And I think the Burberry and the Clay de Peau work best with a very light dusting of powder as a setting powder, or you could even use it as a finishing powder if you want to sort of, you know, kind of blur out, blend out some products, but I think they are best as a light dusting setting powder. You can see under the eyes as well, the Burberry versus the Clay de Peau. I think the Clay de Peau kind of looks slightly less dry than the Burberry, but they're still very close. I think they both work very nicely in that fashion, but if you are to use a Burberry under the eye, my personal recommendation is not the way that I use it here, but the way that I used it in the previous video, I'll leave that linked down below in the description box, but I like to take a finger just in the translucent white powder and just basically tap that on. And then I think that's pretty comparable. It gives a little bit of blurring. It doesn't give you any dryness. I think that is pretty comparable to the Clay de Peau powder in appearance at that point. So overall, those are my thoughts on these powders. Let's take a look at a few quick swatches of the four powders we looked at. So let's start with this Clay de Peau. And you can see that we have kind of this you know, light with a little bit of like a pale peachy pink in there. And it is translucent, but when you buff this in, if you do have a deeper skin tone, I do think that the powder may be evident if you're like really buffing that into the skin. The Burberry, again, we have more shade options. So the white part itself is just a blur powder. Let's go ahead and put that, we'll put that right next to the Clay de Peau. So you can kind of see that. And I do think if you're using just the white, you have more enhanced blurring than you do with the Clay de Peau. But if you're mixing them together, and we'll put that right here, I think it's pretty comparable. And again, I like the fact that they do have the tinted powder that comes in different shades to kind of blend in with that so you can kind of customize your shade. So that's the Burberry. And then the Sisley, Again, I think of this as a powder primer. This does come in two different shades. This is the shade Zero Light, and it's a relatively new shade. Sisley used to only have the shade number one, which was a deeper shade. But you can see that this doesn't have that whitening, brightening effect that you get from the Clay de Peau or the Burberry White Box. So, this is going to blend in a little bit more with the skin tone. And again, we do have a deeper shade in that. And this is the Chantecaille Radiant Glow Blur Powder. So it's in this packaging. This one in particular is limited edition. I no longer have the ones in the permanent line because those shades didn't work as well for me. But you can see we do have a kind of a light pearly pink sheen to it. And this I think is really beautiful. I personally like to buff this in, particularly on the cheeks, use it a little bit like a blush lighter as well. So I do think that the powders have different purposes, but the Clay de Peau and the Burberry are probably closer in uh, function compared to the Sisley or the Chantecaille. So one more time, here's a look at the powders. Let me know what you think. We have the Clay de Peau. We have the Burberry Translucent up here versus mixed here. And then we have the Sisley and then the Chantecaille. So let me know what you think about the powders and you know if, if there was a clear winner there. Let's take a look at the Clay de Peau lipsticks before we move on to the Sonia G Traditions brushes. 
So Clé de Peau has come out with a lipstick called The Precious Lipstick. And I've actually had these for about a month now, but they were available for Nema, at Nima Marcus. By the time I actually received my delivery, they were gone. So I didn't post anything for a while until they came back. Now they are available at department stores, some department stores, and the Clé de Peau website. But this is The Precious Lipstick. And we have a special gold case here. You can see it. we have sort of like this jeweled faceted design. This is magnetic and it is refillable. So we've got a refill here. One thing that I you know wish was a little different is we do have our label with the identifying shade down here, but it's in the clicked in portion. So if you've got a few of these, you know, if you want to know the name or the number, you actually do have to pull out the refill. So I picked up two of these. Let's take a look at the demos while we talk about the product. The Precious Lipstick comes in six shades. It retails for 110 US dollars. We have four grams of product, and this is actually a refillable product. It is made in Japan. I picked up the shade four Charming Pink Sapphire and five Refined Amethyst. Now this lipstick spent more than seven years in development. It is the Clé de Peau's most advanced formula to date. And what they're really highlighting with this is the serum-like texture and intensive skincare benefits. Now I have to say, when I first tried this, I did not read anything about this lipstick. And you can tell when you first put this on that it has intensive skincare benefits. It feels more like skincare, like a skincare serum, than it does an actual lipstick. It is a very soft formula, very creamy on the lips, very comfortable. Now, according to Clay de Peau, it instantly adheres to lips, giving them a three-dimensional and contoured look. It's infused with diamonds, 24 karat gold, and superior skincare ingredients for lips that are instantly plumped, moisturized, and empowered by the richness and radiance of precious jewel tones. So we're supposed to have 10 hours of lasting moisture and it's going to decrease the appearance of fine lines and roughness on your lips within three days. So if you use this three days in a row, lips will appear plumper and smoother and it's supposed to last eight hours and be smudge resistant. Now I have to say, I do agree with some of those claims, but I disagree with some as well. So it definitely feels like a very reparative lip treatment. You know, it it's very comfortable. You can feel the hydration on your lips. It feels silky. It definitely feels different from their other lipsticks. It again is a little bit thinner and it doesn't have it doesn't really feel like there are many waxes in it, like a traditional lipstick. And again, if you look at the actual bullet here, we do have this slim style tube that it's encased in because it is a very soft formula. If they were to do this in a traditional bullet, it would break pretty much immediately. Now, when this was new, and you can see this in the YouTube short that I have, it actually did have a jeweled faceted design on there. It is such a soft formula that that is gone with the first use. Now, as for the claims, I do agree with their skincare claims, but for me, the wear time on this, I actually did try to film a wear test, but you know, depending on what you're eating that day, this color is not gonna last eight hours. So mine was gone, you know, after dinner. So like, I really didn't see any color, so I didn't even film the wear update for it because it was, it was just kind of gone. So I think it depends what you're eating. If you're not really eating or drinking a lot, yes, it's gonna last eight hours. If you're having something, you know, that's very dry, yes, you can definitely see that pigmentation last. But if you're gonna have something like Chinese food, like I did, that is going to be completely gone. Even though I was very careful not to really get much on my lips, it, it was still just kind of gone. So um, I would say that the wear time on that, you know, use your own judgment, but if you're gonna have a lot of contact with your lips or anything greasy, it's not really going to last. Now, smudge resistant, I would say that it remains pretty smudge free during general use. And you do, you are left with a stain. Like if I'm just like eating like a sandwich and drinking water throughout the day, I will still have a stain on there. My lips still feel comfortable. It doesn't feel like I need to reapply. This lipstick now, this has actually been on for a few hours. 
you can see I still have pigmentation coming off. All I've had so far though is some water. So drinking out of my water bottle. So it, it would leave like the bottle marks and you can see it's actually held up really well there. Now my thoughts on the lipstick, I have to say I do really, really like the lipstick. I think is a really nice formula and I have noticed, I, I was actually sick last week and I was using this lipstick and it actually helped heal a cut that I had in my lip. And you know, I do think that it is really nicely done. It's reparative. This is definitely one that for me, I would gravitate towards when my lips are in, you know, less than, less than good <laughs> repair, uh, particularly like during the winter when you're wanting kind of some reparative benefits, some lip balms and so forth. It's comfortable. It's hydrating. It really performs well. It is an expensive lipstick, is not going to be for everybody, but one of the things I have to say is this formula, although it's expensive, you can tell it's an advanced formula for the price, whereas a lot of times you'll see more expensive lipsticks and it's like, it's still the same formula. You know, you, you don't really see any difference, any reason for the increase in price, perhaps it's packaging, but this you can actually tell that there is advancement in the formula. Now, whether it's worth 110 US dollars, that is a totally personal decision. For some people it will be, for others it's gonna be no way. But I have to say that at least with our price increase, we are seeing a nicer, more reparative formula than what we see at a less expensive price point. So let's take a look at the swatches real quickly. This is number four, Charming Pink Sapphire. And you can see this is going to be a soft pink. It does lean a little bit warm, but it's still pretty neutral. And you can see with one swipe, we're getting, uh, I would say medium to full coverage, but you can definitely build that up a little bit more. And one of the beautiful things about this is the sheen. I mean, look at that sheen. It's not really going to be the same as like those high shine finishes that you get with something like a Lip Chic or the new Moisture Glaze lipsticks from Suku, but we have this really beautiful satin sheen that just looks hydrating. And one of the things that I notice about this is because it does actually hydrate your lips, they do appear to have fewer lines while you're wearing this. This one here is shade number five, Refined Amethyst. And this is my favorite of the two that I picked up, but I'm also tempted to pick up a third shade at some point, perhaps if it goes on sale. But this is gonna be a cooler tone, rosy pink. It's not really, you know, true amethyst. We don't really have that much purple in there, but there is a little bit of a hint of purple. Um, but I would say it's mostly just a cool toned rose. So we've got four and five. And again, these are refillable, they are permanent. The refills are not currently available here, but they, those should be coming at some point. And these, unfortunately, although they are refillable, there are no other lipsticks currently that fit into this packaging. Now let's go ahead and move on to the Sonia G Traditions brushes. All right, so these are the Sonia G Traditions brushes. And I'd love to give a big shout out to Sonia G because these were gifted to me. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. So we have these gorgeous handles. We've seen these handles before. This is going to be our Kiyaki wood that we've seen in the mini travel sizes, but it's also what we saw in the Holiday Trio from 2022. So we've got that same design there. We've got a matte brass ferrule and the gorgeous Kiyaki wood, which is, you know, it's a natural wood. We've got grains in there. So there will be some like variation. Now I want to show you what, how the handle is done. We've got Sonia G right there. Uh, when you turn it, we have Japan. Then we have some Chinese characters and our identification. So this is T6, this particular brush. And this is a really large brush. Now you can see we've got this beautiful persimmon dye technique. We'll talk about this in a minute. We've seen that before with some of our other brushes like this one here, the Mount Fuji. And this is a very special dyeing technique. So we'll talk about that while we're looking at the demos. Let's go ahead and just take a look at the demos while we talk about the details of these. Then we'll look at each of the brushes individually with a few comparisons. 
Now, if you're not familiar with it, Sonia G has her own blog called Sweet Makeup Temptations, and that's been going on for years. It's something that I have read for many years, way before I started YouTube, and she gives such extensive details on brushes. So she's got brushes, not just her own, but she has other brands there as well. She gives extensive details on how things are made, how they're designed, why they're designed this way, and comparisons as well. So I don't want to take away from her blog so I'll leave that linked down below and for more information definitely check that out because it is just a wealth of information there so as I mentioned we've seen these handles before with the holiday trio for from 2022 those were really exquisite they were very well received it's a very it's a more time intensive technique to make the handles this shape out of this special wood the kiyaki wood is native to Japan. It's a very special wood, and it's also one that is prone to like dents naturally in the wood. So there's a special like polishing technique and so forth that the artisans do to make this very smooth and you know kind of finish things off. And Sonia G, she details all of that in her blog. So definitely take a look if you are more interested in that. But the shape of these, you know, they're following traditional craftsmanship techniques. And again, it's a very time intensive process to create the shape of these handles. And then on top of that, we have the Kakashibu die. And this is basically a persimmon tannin die. I've got a few other brushes uh, from Koyoto that have also used this die in the past. It's a very again, time intensive process to dye these and they are done by hand by one particular artisan. So this master artisan does these brushes by hand. It's a permanent dye, but you know, over time, just like any dyes, you know, let's say you wash your brushes like a hundred times, they won't be as vibrant as they are initially. So Although these brushes can be used for powders, creams, and liquids, I would definitely recommend using them the majority of the time with your powders so that you are not stripping as much of the dye during the cleaning process. So that's just my personal thoughts on that, but they are definitely appropriate for powders, creams, and liquids. If they are something you're looking for, you know, for creams and liquids on a regular basis, though, I would definitely recommend using something a little bit more suited like the Sunuji Fusion brushes or any of the regular undyed goat hair brushes. Now, another thing about this dye is it is a natural insect repellent and has anti-mold, anti-fungal properties in it. This not only helps protect your brushes, but this can be a really great thing for people who perhaps have issues with acne or anything like that, where you have to be really cautious to make sure you are not having any bacterial contamination and things like that. Particularly with eye brushes, I think everybody should be extra cautious with eye brushes. This is just like an added benefit. Does that mean you shouldn't be cleaning your brushes and making sure that they are clean before use? Absolutely not. <laughs> but it's just kind of an added bonus. And as somebody who struggled with acne in the past, that is definitely something that I would welcome. So, you know, I, I just think that's definitely worth mentioning and it's a great, great benefit. Now, the dye itself, Sonia G actually mentions, and she's very clear about this, that the dye dyeing process here can actually make the undyed goat hair base a little bit, you know, not quite as soft as it was previously. Now I have to say, they are softer than I expected. Uh, after hearing that. So they are still incredibly soft. There is a little bit more grip. So they pick up the product perhaps a little bit more strongly than some of the other brushes that I have. But I do have some face brushes with the this persimmon dye technique as well. And I would have to say that with those, I really can tell the difference uh, in the level of softness, but with these eye brushes, they feel just as soft on the eyes, uh, regardless. So I think that, you know, they're really well done. And I don't think, you know, even if you have very sensitive eyes, I don't think that this dye is a deterrent in that sense. They are incredibly soft and the shapes really kind of help 
promote that smooth glide onto the skin so you're not dealing with any roughness. Now, these brushes are permanent. However, they're permanent subject to availability of the materials. So it is something that they do plan on creating more, but it is a time intensive process. So they do take a little bit longer to restock. And if materials aren't available, that can always be an issue, but they are technically permanent brushes. You can purchase them as a set for 240 US dollars or the individual brushes range in price from 36 to 50 US dollars and they are available at Beautylish. So let's take a look at the brushes individually along with a few comparisons. We're gonna work backwards from the largest brushes down to the smaller ones. So this is the T6. So we do have a slightly larger handle because it is a larger brush. And you can see we have this beautiful arch ferrule, which we've seen with some of the other brushes in the past. And that really gives you a little bit more of a firmer control in the center of the brush so that you have a little bit more control. It's really great for slightly larger brushes because you are getting that larger size and ease of use while still maintaining control. So this brush here, this is a beautiful sweeper brush. It's actually incredibly soft. You can see that it's also fairly wide. Um, for me, it's a little bit large though for <laughs> my eyes. So it's great for a one and done if you're working with a light color. For me personally though, I actually really like it for highlighter. If you were to use it with creams and liquids, you know, it would also make a nice concealer brush. But again, I wouldn't recommend doing that on a daily basis, but I do think it's great for highlighter. It's great for one and dones, but it is a little bit larger for my preference for that. But I wanted to compare it to a few other larger eye brushes. So let's start off with a couple from Refer. This is the Refer 36. It's a very different shape. So we're not really comparing the shape here, but I did want to compare the size. So if you have that, you can see that the Sonia G, the width of it is pretty comparable. So we have a very similar size. It's just in this case, you can see here with the Sonia G that we have a very subtle curvature here. This is basically where our hairs start to get longer. So it's gonna be pretty smooth from here. And then we have this little um, gradient. Shape-wise, if you look at the Mount Fuji brush, you can see that although this is a large face brush, our shape for these is very, very similar. And this is the uh, travel size Niji. And you can see, again, we have a very similar shape. We also have that arch ferrule there. So, just something to note, this is essentially an eye size version of those brushes. Now, another refer one, just for size comparison, this is 33. And you can see again that our width is gonna be comparable, but because the refer shape becomes more tapered, we're gonna be a little bit wider here, fans out a little bit. And then this is the F05 from Chikahoto. You can see our handle size is different. The Chikahoto is going to be longer bristle, is going to be thinner. And you can see this is, again, very soft, a great shader or sweeper. But you can see that the Sonia G, although it's fluffier and bigger, it has more control. It's going to be a denser brush. And then the last one I want to take a look at, this is the Chikahoto KZ6, which is one of my favorite one and done brushes. You can see that size wise, they're actually not that different. This is one of my favorite one and dones because it fits so beautifully here, but because this is wider going into the crease and so forth, it, it actually feels larger on the eye. So although our length is about the same, our curvature is similar, the width is about twice as large with the Sonia G. So just one more time so you can see how this goes onto the skin. I mean, it's very, very soft, smooth. You can buff with this. You can see, although I'm pressing here, we've got firmness and yeah, the bristles really hold up well. So we have a lot of structure and control with this brush. Oh, and just one more. This is the Sonia G Jumbo Blender from the Sky Series. So you can see that that is going to be smaller. Our ferrule is not arched with the uh, Sky Series brush, but I just wanted to show you the size difference here. So 
This is essentially, I would say like one and a half times the size, almost double <laughs> of the Jumbo Blender. Moving on to the T5, this is one of my favorites. This is kind of a hybrid brush. It has a pinched ferrule, more like a shader style. We have kind of the same type of shape here, but yet yeah, it's fluffy like a crease brush. So it's kind of a hybrid between a crease and a shader. And look at the structure here. We've got a little bit of firmness to help you control where things go, yet we've got that fluffiness as well. So you can buff things in and kind of use it uh, for transition. Now you can see I did use this from the demo, so that is dirty there, but you can see the dye on this side here. There's really only, there are only a couple comparisons I want to make with this. So the most comparable is the Refer 01 Max. So if you pick that up from Refer during the holidays this season, you can see that we have a very similar shape and fluffiness. The Sonia G is pinched a little bit tighter here than the Refer. And you can see that the refer is gonna be a little bit airier, whereas the Sonia G has a little bit more control. Also the refer, the fibers are a little bit longer, but you can see there that they are gonna be pretty comparable in size. The refer is just slightly larger. And then this is the Sonia G Worker Pro. And this one is gonna be more shader style because it's pinched further. We do have that nice curvature. You can see that it is going to be smaller than the uh, new T5. And this one has a bit more control, again, because it's gonna be a little bit shorter and more compact overall. So those are gonna be your comparisons for that. I have to say, I really love this brush. If you're looking at purchasing like individuals, and you're looking for things that are unique in your collection, I would say that this T5 is definitely one that we just don't really have too many comparisons of. I think that's definitely one to get. Next, we have the T4, and this is going to be a flat crease brush. You can see it's gonna be on the smaller size, and yet, because we have this flattened top, it's really great for blending, uh, you know, specifically transitions, and you can see that we have a bit more spring in these fibers. So notice that although I'm pressing down, it's really just the tip that's moving. The part closer to the ferrule is really staying in position. So I wanted to compare that to the Refer 14. Those are very similar in size. The Refer 14 you see actually has a smaller diameter. It has a little bit more curvature, it's not as flat. It's a little bit area overall, um, but you know, again, they're gonna be pretty comparable in size. And then I also want to take a look at the Refer 15 Mini. Again, this one has a little bit of a curvature. Size-wise though, again, this is ever so slightly smaller in diameter, but it's a little bit closer um, to the true size of the T4. And you can see that this one, again, it's just a li little bit airier, whereas the, the Sonia G is a little bit more dense. So those are the crease brushes here. So this is the T4. And next up, this is the T3. So you can see we have kind of this pencil candle uh, flame shape. We've got, again, kind of that stronger core down here, but it's gonna be very soft and flexible at the tip. This is really great for inner corner, smudging under the eye, you know, if you're putting like powder under the eye, like a powder shadow. Um, I think it's really soft. You've got a very flexible tip. The first thing it made me think of was a larger version of the Refer 26. You can see we do have a similar shape and the Refer though is significantly smaller, so it does have a bit more structure. You can see the core on this one also doesn't move, just this tip, but we do have a smaller tip, so you're getting a little bit more precision with the Refer, whereas this is gonna give you more of that softer look. And then I also want to take a look at, this is the Refer 14 Max. I wanted to show you this in comparison of the size. I do find that these work better for different purposes though. The 14 Max, I really like for um, adding a color deeper into the crease and kind of staying very precise. You can see we do have that strong core here and only the tip is really moving. It is going to be longer, but smaller in diameter. 
and the Sonia G is going to be softer. It actually flows a little bit more. So it's hard to say that it's airier per se, but the tip is airier. So that's our difference with those. And then this is the Sonia G crease one brush. And you can see, again, we've got the same type of shape, but it's going to be smaller, similar in diameter. And the same general idea where this base is going to stay pretty much the same. The tip is moving, but again, we've got a firmer, smaller tip versus the T3. So I think this is another really great brush. I don't have one that performs exactly quite like this. If you'd like to use shadow under the eye or kind of smudge things and you could use this like deep in the crease in our corner, this is another really great one to pick up. So I really enjoy this. This one here is the T2. So this is our like traditional shader style brush. You can see we have a taper. The shape itself is very similar to the flat definer because we're really tapering to a point here, but this is larger overall, so it's gonna work better uh, like a shader brush. But a few comparisons, this is the Sonia G Builder Pro. You can see that the Builder Pro is gonna remain fluffier overall, whereas we come to more of a point with the T2. So you can see that difference here. So the T2, when that flows over your, Again, here you really want to do this in a back and forth motion or kind of use the tip. This is another one you could use the tip on the lower lash line. The Builder Pro is going to stay very firm, but we have that fluffier edge there, so it will blend out things a little bit more. Whereas this is really more for the T2 is more for product placement. Another comparison here this is the Builder M, and this is from the recent Sony G Fundamentals set. You can see that our shape is different. This is gonna be boxier. It's gonna remain fluffier at the top as well. So just a little bit of a difference there. This is gonna be a little bit softer here um, in the terms of its blending ability. And this is the Refer 02 Max. And you can see we do actually have a similar shape. They both taper at the top, but the Refer tapers kind of just right here, whereas we have a more dramatic taper on the Sonia G. So again, similar purpose. This is gonna be a bit wider though, the refer is wider. And then last one here, this is the builder from the Sonia G Lotus set. It's gonna be more square. We don't have as much of the taper, but the width is going to be about the same. And the size of the bristles is comparable as well. So if you have that one, you kind of get an idea of the size. Now, this is the T2, this is the T1. You can see the T1 is very similar in shape, except it's gonna be flat instead of rounded at the top, but we still have that taper there. This is one that is great for lining and smudging. My closest comparison to this is actually the Sonia G Smudger 2. I thought this was the closest. You can see the Smudger 2 is gonna be bigger. It's a little bit longer with your bristles and slightly wider as well. So this will just be a slightly bigger brush. So here's the Smudger 2. See how much that's bending versus this one. We've got more flexibility, so this will give you a softer blend. And again, it's going to be a little bit smaller overall, so you're working with smaller lines. I also want to take a look at the Sonia G Flat Definer. This is going to be more rounded and it's going to be longer. So just to kind of show you how this performs versus the new T1. And then last up, we have the Zero Two Mini, which is longer in bristles. It's not gonna be quite as tapered, but it is gonna be very flat and give you a similar function there to that. So I would say that they are comparable in terms of, in terms of function. So I hope that was helpful. I have to say, I really love this new set. Now, depending on what brushes you have in your collection, you might want to add the entire collection. You might want to pick up a piece here and there. So my favorites, my personal favorite out of all of them would be the T5. I actually you know, really love this T6 brush. I think it's a really special brush, but I don't think I'll use it as much as it warrants um, just because the size for me. But this one here, the T5 is definitely one of my must haves followed by the T3. I think these are probably the two that I will use the very most, but I think they're all functional. 
Uh, you know, they work well with her other collections as well as other brushes. So I think it really kind of depends what you have, but if you're looking at picking up two, my personal favorites are the T5 and the T3. So let me know what your thoughts. Let me know if you pick these up. I do think that these are a really special brush and it really celebrates the craftsmanship of the artisans. And I also, I, I really like this dyeing technique and how it performs because I do feel like the pickup of the product is a little bit stronger with these. So you're getting more pigmentation from your products, yet you're still, you know, minimizing fallout. So I think, you know, they're definitely a welcome addition to her lineup. So let me know what your thoughts are on all of the products featured here today. We definitely went through quite a few things today. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you very soon.